Hello everyone and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. Today we are progressing yet another tier in the new European Destroyer Tech Tree and we are at tier 9 with, and uh, I hope I pronounced this correctly, I have not been able to find any hints as to how to pronounce this, so if somebody speaks Greek please do let me know if I'm doing this right. The Lambros Katsunis, I am assuming, is how that is pronounced. Anyway, uh, this is an interesting one in, in many, many different ways. But uh, let's begin with the uh, actual warship info. This ship did not exist, by the way. But uh, what the info here tells us is that the Greeks were who have been in perpetual uh, strife with the Turkish uh, wanted more destroyers after the Turkish bought themselves some Italian destroyers and ended up ordering some from Italy as well. But apparently um, there has been an alternative approach that Wargaming dug up somewhere uh, to use uh, larger ships with 140 millimeter guns. And they are mentioning uh, that, uh, that uh, there was a fleet cruiser design from the British Admiralty, uh, which was the E-Class, which had been armed with 640 millimeter guns. Mm. E-Class eventually became the Emeralds. Uh, as far as I was able to find, they didn't use 140mm guns, but 150s. Now, there might have been a pre-design to use this, but what I actually found when looking up the actual gun is that the gun, in fact, did exist. And the gun uh, was used in uh, a Greek light cruiser that was called the Lambros Katsonis. <laughs> Uh, built in 1915 and uh, immediately, as was uh, by the British, and immediately uh, pre uh, taken over by the British at the outbreak of the war and renamed HMS Chester by, of all ships. The reason the Greeks wanted the 140mm gun instead of the more customary 152mm guns that the uh, British were sailing on their light cruisers was uh, that they were after a lighter gun that's easier to load and uh, at the ranges that they were expecting to shoot people had the same amount of firepower as the 150s, they just didn't need them. So they'd rather have more smaller caliber guns on these things, which allowed them to think, I think have 10 instead of nine single fire guns. So they got, they'd rather have an extra turret uh, for that. Now, that was the only use I found that the British ever had for a 140mm gun, because that was uh, that was something that was uh, customary ordered by the Greek. And actually, some of these guns apparently survived, and some of them were, were reused in some other British ships. But uh, uh, I wonder if they got something in a twist there, or if there was just a design that I didn't see that is somewhere in the archives, but is not published in, in my sources. Uh, either way, um, a, uh, a, a light cruiser with 140 millimeter guns, which is very fitting because the Lambros Katsonis is a light cruiser. Uh, hang on, Terry, you said it's the European destroyer tree. Well, uh, this is where the other interesting bit comes in because uh, to my great unfortune, uh, I generally try to avoid this sort of thing. Uh, I have seen, uh, well, I haven't seen Sly 47's review of the ship, but I have seen the thumbnail of it. And the thumbnail said something along the lines of, yeah, just skip this one. So I usually try to avoid any kind of bias when I'm testing ships, but uh, well, uh, I looked at it anyway. And after the first probably three or four rounds I played, I said, oh, good grief. This is an absolutely atrocious boat. This is worse than the Izumo. And <laughs> um, I, I did... I did not get anywhere with this ship. I got my behind handed to me in a catastrophic manner. So I put my phone away, said, okay, um, I'm probably just gonna pick one of these battles, um, rip Wargaming a new one saying, this is an absolute disaster. And uh, I'll record that tomorrow. And then I went to sleep. And then the next morning I woke up and said, you know what, um, I'll give it another go. And uh, the first thing I did was uh, testing the ship out a little bit in the training room and getting a feel for the gun layout and all the other things. And uh, well, I'm not going to I'm not going to get to the result just yet, but uh, I, I did have another go at it. And uh, here you have the result of my initial disastrous disappointment and uh, my second attempt at the day after. 
So, uh, Lambros Katsunis, what are we looking at? Uh, let's look at some comparisons and see if we can find out how that differs from the split at tier 8, which was a sort of French-ish thing. Uh, we get a level 2 engine boost and an extra radar, but that's about it. In ship skills, we get more hit points, but the uh, maneuverability is taking another dent. Um, oh, 5 second turn time is Minotaur level. <laughs> so we're definitely in light cruiser territory here. 20,000 hit points also getting close. We are getting 6 140 millimeter guns. Now these are British 140 mils, but for all intents and purposes, they appear to have the same stats as the uh, 140 millimeter Skodas that we had in tier 8. Uh, only that we get six of them with a br very briefly <laughs> reduced load and a very slight longer range. So for all intents and purposes, we get a, a, an extra gun over the split and that's it. The torpedoes um, have a slightly longer reload, but in return a bit more range and a bit more speed. I think the 8 kilometer range is what makes that uh, just really a little bit better. And the AA is actually, well, sort of worse and sort of not, because uh, she only gets small caliber AA, but in return uh, that has an almost 3 kilometer range, which means that still we're tier 9 here and things don't get shot down with 140 points of damage. 7.3-kilometer uh, surface space detection is definitely scout cruiser level. So this is not a destroyer. And this is also, uh, so this was sort of my conclusion after the second day, because what I did on the third, first day was play it as a destroyer. What I did on the second day was not. And in fact, I am going to have to actually go into the training room very briefly with the, the Lambros Katsunis for you, because uh, I do have to demonstrate this. So uh, let's just do that. Uh, my... When I test ships, sometimes, you know, I look at a ship saying, oh yeah, okay, I know what this is. And uh, I play it five times, I pick two battles that show um, relatively well of what the ship can and can't do, and there we go. Other ships make it a little bit more difficult. And uh, actually, these are the more enjoyable ones. Right, so, uh, first things first. Um, actually, we can't really see it that well here. But look at the, uh, look at the forward turrets. Uh, there are three. Two of them are actually... Uh, two of them are next to each other. That is a very strange layout. We've seen that, I think, on the... Oh, I could be wrong. We've seen that somewhere on something British with um, on, on one of the weird premium cruisers, I think. But what this means is because the two single turrets forward are next to each other, is that you have really weird gun angles. So here we go. Uh, we have We have all six guns on target. That includes the two next to each other forward turrets. But uh, right, we're losing. We're very quickly losing one of two of the rear turrets. But if we're turning backwards, we're very qu quickly losing the uh, losing one of the side turrets. And if you're going backwards enough, like over here, in a kiting position, you see what the side turret is doing. You, you see the little the little orange, and it's gone. So if I turn back, it's it's try to go the other way. So it's sort of like the good old turret bug. It's it's not really a bug per se because, well, it kind of is and it kind of isn't. It, it's kind of the turret bug again. So it, if, we want, if we want to be technical, yes, this is the turret bug because the uh, the gun we're waiting for it to come around on the other side, and it can't. So it can't get around the other side. So it shouldn't try. But uh, this is such a weird layout that it's probably an edge case for the turret bug fix that hasn't been covered. Which means also that if you're now uh, coming out of a kiting position and trying to shoot forward again, your turret needs to turn around again because it's been pointing the other direction. The other thing that's a bit weird is the torpedo angles. Well, uh, the angles are good. They're really good. You've got good forward angles and everything. But look what happens when I launch the torpedoes. Yeah, they're side mounted. <laughs> well, fortunately, uh, the torpedo mounts are, are not messed up, but um, they're side mounted torpedo launchers. All right, that's enough for the training room. Let's get back out of here. And I'll try to show you that again from the... This is important to understand before we get into the game because um, it'll all make sense when we get there. So let's get out of here. And let's look at it a little on here. So there you can see the two forward-facing turrets. So if you're point blank in forward, you actually have three turrets on target. Uh, the torpedo launchers, you can see it there, there's one, and the other one is a little bit offset on the other side, which is a very weird placement as well. 
like an on echelon placement for, tele for torpedo launchers. And that must be unbalanced, right, to some degree. But maybe it just balances it out with, the, with these weird uh, AA mounts. But why they couldn't just have stuck the AA mounts next to each other? Maybe they don't fit next to each other. So maybe that's where this came out of. And then we've got the three single turrets rear woods, um, two on the superstructure and one below with the other two super firing. Which means that if you're like this, you can at best get four or five guns on target, which means you're effectively having a tier nine split as a gunboat. Whereas if you're um, with the direction you want to be in, facing the enemy is like this. All right, let's look at the setup uh, and then I'll explain how we got to all these things. Uh, you get the choice again between the advanced HE shell and the elite gun operator. Uh, I think they're both decent. I personally prefer to have a slightly faster reload because while you can improve the uh, fire, fire chance on the shells it's themselves, if you just boost the reload, you're, sh you're sending more shells. So you also get more fire chance. So all in all, that's pretty much even. And you can get an extra 2% HE damage. It's not massive. But if you, if you fire your shells faster, you get the same thing. Plus you get turret traverse speed. And turret traverse speed is something you want on this ship because of that, of these two, of this pair of single turrets forward, because you need to oftentimes get that one wayward turret back on target. Which is also why I am actually not sailing this with a reload module, but with the main battery traverse module. Because uh, getting your turrets back on target means the one extra gun that you have over the tier eight, and you want that in most cases. Other than that, it's the exact same setup. Now, the historical camouflage gives us a range on the batteries and the torpedoes. It gives us more traverse and surface detection, which is good. Uh, the golden age camo gives us hit points, which is also not bad, but it doesn't give us surface detection. In return, it gives us uh, battery dispersion. Honestly, with, even with an 8.1 kilometer uh, torpedo range, I prefer the uh, the, the, I'd prefer the uh, torpedo range and main battery range because this is not a destroyer. This is a scout cruiser and you have to play it as one. If you play this as a destroyer, you get absolutely creamed uh, unless the enemy team is completely derpy. But if they have any idea what they're doing, they are going to rapidly disassemble you and you have nowhere to go. While this thing gets smoke screens, the maneuverability is relatively poor. And uh, the weird turret arrangement means that most of the time you really don't actually want to be in a, in a dogfight. What you want to be is in a long range engagement, uh, HE spamming and uh, launching torpedoes. This Play this like the, like the uh, German Elbing line of, of scout cruisers. Uh, I have uh, uh, Jerzy Swirsky again on the ship uh, because I haven't gotten my hands on the uh, Epic Commander yet, but uh, Swirsky is not a terrible choice for this. So. Um, he does give us the extra radar, uh, he does give us the, uh, the extra radar uh, du du duration skill, he gives us the improved engine boost, he gives the improved daredevil, which is also good, and uh, the improved giant hunter, which is also nice, even though we're not actually having an awful, awful lot of damage coming from the torpedoes themselves, it's more about the floods. And yes, this is one of the rare instances where you actually want the IFAG skill, not uh, because it's better, but because you don't have armor piercing shells. <laughs> so, or planes for that matter. So, uh, the Lambros Katsonis. Uh, is this a really, really terrible ship, like I thought on my first day of playing, or is this actually somewhat doable? Well, um, I'm not going to spoil it. Let's uh, go into the battles. We're playing the first round with a standard camo, standard captain, so a uh, level 9 commander without the special skills from Swirsky, and uh, with the regular consumables against a, a Prinz Ruprecht, a Richelieu, a Baltimore, Edinburgh, and a Z46 uh, domination on Blue Front. So a lot of things that in a regular destroyer you'd be sort of um, problematic with, uh, things like uh, a Baltimore, an Edinburgh. Uh, not things you generally want. So this is not a destroyer. This is a scout cruiser and play it as such. Uh, that said, it is a very fast ship. So we do definitely have the uh, the sort of Italian-French heritage uh, kind of playing in here, even though the ship itself didn't actually exist. And with the engine boost up, we're doing almost 44 knots, which is good for early rushing of capture circles. With the, for a destroyer, hilariously atrocious service detection, however, you do not want to rush headfirst into the enemy because that's a good way to get yourself killed. 
So I am going to just uh, get get B cap and uh, seeing that our destroyer is moving in, I am going to head over into D. I'm dropping some uh, predictive torpedoes in that general direction and we'll see if I'm hitting anything. This is without the historical camo, so I don't have the enhanced torpedo range. And then I'll be heading over to D cap by my by my lonesome and uh, see who I'm in, who I am going to engage here now with uh, double radar. Hello, Mr. Edinburgh. Uh, are you going in to run into my torpedoes? Oh, oh, they just ran out. With historical camo, I would have killed that thing. And here you see that if you're in a kiting position, uh, you only get five turrets on target. So that bot Fletcher, uh, that bot Fletcher can I can only shoot at with five turrets. While Edinburgh immediately opens up at me, and I'm a uh, capture uh, D because it looks like no, oh no, there's a Prince Ruprecht. Okay, so uh, again, we are not in the right position because we only get five guns on target because I am running away from things. Where's Prince Ruprecht going? Uh, I am going to smoke up now and uh, just turn a ship around to, to get all my gun turrets on target and start uh, setting some fires on the Ruprecht. Although there is an Amagi that is, um, and I'm trying to get into the, the right position there now. Now I'm in the right position. Uh, there is an Amagi that, okay, I'm not going to hit the Ruprecht, but I'm just going to drop an Amagi uh, that I will need to deal with before I can set Permafires on the Ruprecht because that Amagi is a bot and he might have the high explosive loaded on the main guns, which makes him infinitely more dangerous to destroyer players than uh, than real humans. So um, he is now obviously permaflooding be on account of being a bot, but uh, I appear to have run out of uh, run out of map. Uh, yes, no, there's an island. Okay, well, so we're gonna... Uh, no way out of this. We're gonna have to kill the Amagi. A couple more torpedo hits on target. And uh, he's still flooding, so we're just gonna try and wipe that thing out. I am gonna aim for the bow section and see if I can get some full penetrations with the HE. The downside of that may be that it's less good at setting fires. Okay, fortunately, he did not have the HE uh, loaded. So, again, I am not in the right position because I am sort of... Uh, sailing away. Okay, superstructure it is, and again, the same that I had last with this last time with the split. You need to manual aim if you're going for the superstructure because uh, the the shells are just being drawn down. But we have managed to kill the bottom magi without too much trouble. So now we're going to get ourselves decap and then start opening up at that Edinburgh at maximum range and see. And there we have another fire and see that we can HE spam ourselves a cruiser. But as you can see, we're not really doing an awful lot with uh, with the HE shells in terms of damage. Edinburgh is smoking up. Uh, I haven't paid attention, this is a radar one, so he's probably just out of radar range. Uh, but given that I don't really have anything else, oh no, there's the Ruprecht, okay. Uh, never mind then, uh, Edinburgh, uh, Edinburgh um, probably in radar range, maybe? But the Ruprecht is more of my problem. Now, Ruprecht has a battleship, has the Iowa to shoot at. So we are going to, we are going to very much um, uh, dunk some torpedoes on him, and the Ruprecht secondaries have set a double fire, which is annoying as heck. And we we're getting shot at by, I believe, the Edinburgh from behind, which is also not something I enjoy. And once again, um, not the greatest position. You kind of have to sit broadside because of the uh, sort of uh, because of the gun layout to get all your guns on target. But we have managed to take down. Uh, the Ruprecht with the help of the some help of the Iowa. Now that leaves that Edinburgh over here. Now we're five to three, and we're equal, equal in capture circles. So uh, now I am just going to smoke up, and now I'm in the sort of position that I want to be, because I am in my smoke. I am uh, I am angled forward. I can get all my guns on target once I wiggle the ship around a little bit, uh, just dodging some Edinburgh fire here, and. Um, Unfortunately, the Edinburgh is sailing away. Now, I'm not chasing after him just now because Edinburgh has torpedoes, but uh, I do want to get some... Yep, there they come. I do want to get some uh, some shots on target if I can. So you may be a scout cruiser, but you can definitely dodge torpedoes. That said, this is an Edinburgh. That is still a very dangerous ship. So I do have to be a little careful here. And while he's otherwise occupied, uh, unload with my guns. There comes the other torpedo spread. And I should be able to... Oh, I took that. Dang it. <sighs> <laughs> I thought I was able to I was going to be able to dodge that. Anyway, stop here. We don't want to get any closer. We are a scout cruiser and unload at the Richelieu and see if we can set some uh, set some fires there. Uh, while the Edinburgh is merrily burning and uh, we do have we do have the Chungmu. Actually, we're down to 3 versus 3. We've lost two ships in the process and the Baltimore just took out the Anhalt. Uh, oops. <laughs> that just went wrong catastrophically. Chungmu goes uh, YOLO against the Edinburgh. Um, that is brave of you, but there's a Baltimore behind there. 
Okay, takes down the Edinburgh, nicely done, Chungmu. Uh, good drive-by, but now we have a bit of a problem because uh, they are both sailing away, but we are holding three of the capture circles, so we should be okay um, until they turn around. Now, uh, there's still a minute to go, and there is a Baltimore, so I want to try and, uh, and and divert the Baltimore's attention until the Chungmu is reloaded. Uh, that's a double fire. Let's drop some torpedoes in his way. Ah, uh, now he's turning. Where is he going? So we will try to keep the Baltimore occupied. Uh, we are ahead on points. We are ahead on capture circles, but not for long anymore. Ow! Unfortunately, um, I don't really have a way to disengage because the Baltimore is, uh, well, going to be able to see me. So, unfortunately, also, Chung Mu does not have torpedoes ready to send at the Baltimore. So my little distraction here isn't going to work out. And, okay, I'm still alive. 30 seconds. But, uh, yeah, uh, Richelieu is taking the capture circle, Baltimore takes me out, I had no way of getting away from that thing. And now Chung Mu has the torpedoes ready, but I think that's a little late, unfortunately, and Baltimore is gonna, uh, is gonna go through that. And uh, given that we have lost both the capture circles, we don't have the points income, and uh, that was that then. If we both were able to run away, this might have worked, and... Uh, but unfortunately, Chung Mu also didn't get out in time and uh, we'll be losing that one. But look at the amount of damage that we've done here of uh, playing as a scout cruiser rather than as a destroyer. And uh, that's just kind of the role that the ship is comfortable in. Um, being bow in towards the enemy at range, spamming torpedoes and, uh, and HE shells and uh, trying to set perma fires and burn things down. Now, we did have the bot in the beginning, which has uh, which has padded our stats somewhat here. But um, uh, still, there is a fair amount of damage you can do with these things. And uh, that is not a terrible result if the Anhalt and the Mines had, uh, <laughs> well, not gone down. But it's a Richelieu, I understand. So let's get right back into it then, with my newfound confidence that this is not actually a destroyer. Playing Encounter against Marco Polo, Johann de Witt, uh, Lushun, Shimakaze and Gearing. The smoke to, uh, radar combo can be quite potent against enemy destroyers, the fast torpedo reload as well, but do be aware that you have two torpedoes on the side. Anyway, uh, Encounter tends to be a bit base tradey, especially if we are playing against uh, five destroyers, one cruiser and one battleship. So uh, I, d I do, however, have another European destroyer with me, so it's flooding time. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna let that thing go first, because he's got better concealment, honestly. I am not the most, uh, I am not the most concealed of ships, uh, if, I'm gonna be, uh, if I'm gonna be fair. I do, however, have three radars, which could qu come in quite handy if we have to duel someone else. But Halland, if you could go scout, that would be grand. So far, I haven't been spotted, I haven't seen anybody. So um, there's nobody really there. That's the other thing. Destroyers will outspot you because most of destroyers will outspot you because you are really in a scout cruiser. And uh, we are going to, at least in a scout cruiser without Citadel, but we are pushing here. Okay, there's the battleship. Two destroyers on the other side. Uh, there are still three more destroyers. There's the third one in the middle. So there might still be two out here. So. Uh, yeah, this is probably about as far as forward as I want to go, and then we'll start taking on that Marco Polo, which given that... Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, given how many destroyers there are in the, um, in the game, uh, is extremely brave here. Okay, I'm gonna get my other torpedoes away. Oh, oh, sorry. I really didn't want to run into your torpedoes. <laughs> okay, you get a smoke screen in, in uh, as consolation here. And uh, Marco Polo is slowing down, but he is taking a couple of torps. And now he is going to be burning down, because now I'm in my perfect position. I'm safe from the Lush from Lushun and Johan de Witt, and that Marco Polo has been way too ag aggressive given the, uh, given the amount of destroyers here, and uh, has damage controlled the fires, so now it's permafire time. And has taken a big old hit from something there. And again, you need to kind of uh, go into a weird forward angle to get all your guns on target. Uh, Lucian is... no one's coming around the right flank by the looks of it, so I'm just HE spamming the uh, the Marco Polo here happily. There's another fire! 5% <laughs> uh, fire chance and uh, under 4 second base reload is quite nice. So um, he is merrily burning and I have a bot Fletcher and uh, that's fine, I can deal with the bot Fletcher. Ow! I'm not sure what hit me there, but uh, something just hit me there. 
Okay, uh, there, uh, there is the Johan de Witt. I do not want to play with the Johan de Witt. So, uh, uh, doesn't that thing have planes? I haven't seen any planes, honestly. Um, okay, sure, I'll take it. But uh, our battleship here is now under fire from a fr an enemy Shimakaze. So I think it's, it's time for me to, uh, to boost myself all the way back to the friendly capture circle. And uh, hold it, because it looks like the, um, the rest of my team is going for the push. And obviously Shimakaze has gone undetected there. There he is. Uh, Johan de Witt. Uh, is he looking at me funny? Or is he looking at the other at the other ones? Again, kiting position not ideal, but I can try and set a couple. No, he's looking at me. Uh, get, run away. <laughs> I'm a little bit faster than that, mister, but that's fair. Um, and there come a lot of Shimakaze torpedoes. And uh, the Corsa Kulverst has taken out the Johan de Witt. Nice. Well played. That just leaves two destroyer, the Lushun and the Shimakaze, and uh, I can deal with those. Uh, I have some torpedoes ready uh, for the Lushun if he decides to come around here. But other than that, I am just going to gun them down, and for that I do need to get into a mildly awkward position. That's the perfect position. Uh, Lushun takes one torp. These are fast, but they don't do an awful lot of damage. Uh, Shima coming from the left, I see him. But I'm gonna try and deal with. I can only deal with one at a time. I'm gonna deal with the Lucian first, and these HG shells are pretty, uh, pretty uh, painful. Honestly, it's not German, it's not German armor piercing, uh, destroyer armor piercing. But uh, yeah, uh, that Montana is not gonna have a good game. I'm sorry, Monty. I've tried, <laughs> and he did. Uh, gearing actually, uh, is it gearing? Hey, I've got radar ready. Gearing, <laughs> not happening. There was a Shima out there somewhere, wasn't he? Okay, he's dead now, and uh, that just leaves whatever that was left. It was somewhere over there on the... I'm not sure where it went. But uh, yeah, so um, the Lambros Katsonis, is this a terrible ship? No, actually this is a really good ship. But you have to play it right. Um, you play the ship mostly at range. Uh, you're mostly there to HE spam. Uh, you, you can use your torpedoes quite effectively with the forward angles at long ranges. And um, this thing can hold its own against enemy destroyers. The forward turret placement is really weird and makes the getting the sixth gun on target quite awkward at times. But do try to get that forward 45 degree forward angle and get, uh, uh, get things, uh, get your guns on target. The radar a smoke combo makes for a very and the punchy guns make for a very 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 dangerous uh, ship against enemy destroyers just don't rush into destroyer positions you are not here to go and cap at the beginning of the game you are not here unless it's safe to do so you are not here to um to to rush battleships that is not what you do in this thing what you do in this thing is stay at range he spam torpedo spam uh, farm damage over time Played as much more like you would a German scout cruiser, so the Elbing destroyer line, and I think you'll have a lot of fun with this ship. So uh, that started out catastrophically terribly because I played it like a destroyer and ended up uh, me being uh, being very much in favor of this ship. This is a good ship. This is a fun ship, in my opinion, and uh, can do really well. So there you have it, uh, the tier 9, the Lambros Katsonis, and I'm going to look at the Gdansk next. Uh, but that's it for me today. Thanks, everybody, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.